Hey, what's up? I'm Dennis Koyul. Welcome to my home studio in Essen in Germany. And I'm a Cubase user and I'm going to show you some of my favorite features. I started making music 10 years ago, maybe even longer than that. Uh, when I was still at school, I was starting with uh, Reason actually back in the time. Um, and then it took a while until I, um, I got my first contract. It was um, from a guy in my hometown who had a record label, really, really small label, but it was a cool opportunity just to get something out. And um, then I, I just continued working and um, I got in touch with a record label in Cologne, Germany. There was like the first guys that uh, took me into the industry and I got in touch with a couple of DJs and, and other uh, people from the industry. And um, I got some first remix opportunities back in the days. I wanted to be able to, you know, I wanted to see like, okay, is it actually possible to make money with music? Mm -hmm. Can I live from it? So I, I did those remixes. I got into mastering also because I, I always like to look at the technical side of music productions. I had DJ friends and they were like, yeah, your stuff sounds so great. Maybe you can do mastering from me. And then I did a couple of mastering jobs for some friends and then they talked about it and they told their friends. And then all of a sudden, I, I don't know, I think I did like 20 to 30 mastering jobs in a month when I was like 20 years old around about. Um, how were you mastering? Just uh, software mastering. Just yeah, I, I used all the stuff from UAD, uh, which I'm still a big fan of, by the way, it's, it's great plugins. Um, and I used the Penguin Analyzer. Uh, and and I, I think uh, I did stem masterings and I knew exactly how to get the levels right and to do some EQing and some compression and and, and simple stuff actually but I guess I, I, advanced, I enhanced the track in the, in the right way and people liked it a lot so they talked about it they told their friends and then they told their friends and then all of a sudden a lot of people in Germany knew about it and they came to me and they wanted to get the mastering done by me so the beginning, it was very hard for me to learn because I had non, uh, nobody to teach me anything. I didn't have, none of my friends were making music, like in my, you know, uh, close of uh, uh, friendships. And, and um, uh, I, I, I mean, I didn't learn anything at school or whatever, so about music production. So I had to just uh, learn it by myself, especially at that time. There were, there were not so many YouTube tutorials, not so much stuff you could read about. So um, I was just trying to, to find out by myself. So um, I, at that time I had a Cubase SX3, the really old version, and um, I, I just digged into it. So it took me a couple, couple of years to get really good at it. Yeah, to be really honest, the first reason why I uh, chose Cubase was because at that time uh, Logic was, uh, I mean, it's still only for Mac, and at that time I wasn't able to afford a Mac because I didn't make any money and a Mac was really expensive, so I couldn't get a Mac and uh, so I wasn't able to run Logic. Um, so I said, okay, I, I want a similar door, so I'm going to pick Cubase and that worked well for me. At that time, I was always kind of looking at Logic. I was always a bit jealous at the Logic guys, um, but I think now today uh, I'm, I'm very convinced about uh, Cubase and I think it's the most advanced door out there. What I want to show you is the integrated Vari Audio thing in Cubase, which is kind of a Melodyne integrated into Cubase. It's really, really smart and very quick um, way of editing vocals. So um, it's still the same project that I pulled up before. It's uh, actually my collaboration with Thomas Gold called uh, Torn Apart. Um, and we did a lot of vocal processing in the break part and um, I've used a lot of the Vari Audio in this project, so I'm going to show you what happens here um, with the vocal. Don't be afraid, I'm back to your heart, cause I will be hurting no doubt with the voice torn apart. Don't this is Vari Audio, what's happening here with that melody thing that we created, so basically we uh, cut a little sample from the vocal, looped it, and then I'm taking those little slices uh, and I'm going into the editor. Um, what you got to do is you go into Vari Audio here, uh, you hit the pitch and warp thing, then it analyzes your notes, and now you can just easily grab uh, one of those notes here, you hit the pitch and warp and put here and then you can do this. Put it, move it to any note you want to and we wanted it to play this melody so uh, I think you get it, it's, it's really simple. 
So just, you know, when you want to move it up, you just, I'd, we just grab this little snippet and uh, pitched it up. And then that's how we built that melody. Actually, I'm going to show you the original vocal recording, which was completely different because we bended the whole vocal into a totally new melody and it still sounds natural. I think it's pretty amazing. All right, so here's the original vocal from the original track recordings from the beginning. It was a totally different melody. Don't be afraid, I'm back to my heart. This is the original. And we turned it into... Don't be afraid, I'm back to my heart. completely different melody because what we did what happened is we um, came up with a vocoder melody I'm gonna solo the vocoders these were just totally different chords we had the chord idea from a different track and we used it on these vocals with a vocoder we liked it a lot with that melody so then we were like okay but what we have to do with the original vocal is we have to bend it into the vocoder melody and we did it completely with Vari Audio um, so the full vocal, this is all pitched. It's completely pitched. We just looked into the vocoder and we, we took the notes of the vocoder uh, from, from here and the vocal is following the top line of the vocoder. I did it by hand pitching. Um, but there's actually even a way to do it automated in, in Cubase. It's um, a little bit tricky, but it's, it's possible because um, Cubase has this harmony engine integrated to analyze chords and to apply chords to different tracks. And it even works uh, simultaneously with the Vari Audio. So the Vari Audio can follow the chords that you created on a different track. Um, I tried it only one time and it works. I can, I mean, we could, we could try it. Let's see if it works. All right, so we got the vocal here um, and I applied the, the Vari Audio um, just to analyze the, the melody. And now what we want to try is um, you can actually use the integrated harmony engine to create chords and your vocals are going to follow those, those chords from your chord track. So, First thing you gotta do is you gotta create a chord track in Cubase. You just um, go into this menu and here's the chord track. So this is it. Um, now there are so many possibilities actually what you can do with a chord track. You can even analyze chords that you, you have played before or you can create new chords from scratch and other instruments are going to follow those chords. There's a lot of stuff uh, that you can do with it. You just have to really look into it, uh, maybe read the manual. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some basic new chords. Um, so this is the first one. You double click and select a chord. Let's do C major. Um, next chord. Um, now what you can do is you can either pick a chord yourself, whatever you want to, or there's a chord assistant. And this chord assistant tells you what could be the next chord. Like it gives you options, mm. stuff that makes sense musically. Uh, when you use the chord assistant, you are likely gonna end up with very basic chord progressions, stuff that's, you know, like the pop formula kind of thing. It's, it's cool sometimes, uh, maybe you got three chords, you're missing a fourth chord and uh, you're like fighting and, and wondering what you, can, what you can do and then this, this works really well. Um, okay, let's just pick what this guy suggests. All right, here we go. First thing now, I'm gonna add a new instrument um, anything, just now a simple sound, let's pick the Nexus. Um, and I'm gonna make the Nexus follow these chords. So, I think it's in the, in the chord track settings, uh, live transformation, chords, and now it should do it. Yeah, 
this is a bit low. Maybe we can move it up an octave. Yeah, in the in the settings in the chord track, you can define um, a, a voice range. You can say, okay, this is going to be my lowest possible note, and this is going to be the highest possible note. So the lowest one is set to C1. I'm going to put this to C2. Um, and the highest note is D4, which should be fine. Let's listen to it. No. Let's pull it up. I had to set the live transformation to scales. Actually, that's the mode when you know it follows the chords in the in the range that you define. The last chord is a bit nasty, <laughs> so maybe we pick that, go into the chord assistant, and just select something else that it suggests. Let's do this. Whatever, it works. It's kind of a chord progression that makes sense, but of course you can change it any way you want to. Um, and now we want to try to make the vocal transform uh, in a way that it works together with these chords harmonically. So um, let's look into it. Okay, so we have the original vocal here. Um, don't be afraid, don't back to your heart, cause I will be hurting no doubt with the voice torn apart. Okay, that's the original. Now um, we're gonna use the chord track to, so that the vocal follows the chord track. You set it here. Uh, there are different modes you can, you know, different options you can choose from chords, scales, uh, um, voicings and stuff. Uh, I think in this case we have to choose single voice. Um, and now you got two options. You can, um, you, oh yeah, you can tell them if, it's, if it should follow the chord track directly or in case if you have um, your own chords played before, I think it can try to um, it can try to match the chords you played before and match it to the chord track first and then it applies it to the to the vocal. It's really complex. There's so much stuff you can try out. But I'm just gonna tell it to follow the chord track directly now. Alright. <laughs> kind of. What's happening is um, Vari Audio cuts the, the, the vocal into, into words, basically, and it, then it pitches word by word, almost. Um, so you got the, the little slices here, and it can only pitch on the next slice. And it doesn't slice exactly when the next chord comes in, it slices when the... Uh, it pitches when the next slice is, is here, so... Um, what, I think what you gotta do is you gotta pitch it a bit manually and adjust it yourself. But you get the basic movement in here, which I think is pretty cool. So, so this one has to go down. Yeah, that works. It's, I mean, <laughs> We're just talking about harmonics now, if it's musically correct. So, I mean, it doesn't really sound nice, but you, you get the idea and, and it works. Yeah. <laughs> so you get the idea. Um, this can be really cool for, you know, very creative work, actually, if you want to do really crazy vocal editing and... and uh, um, if, you know, for for instance, for dubstepish kind of stuff on on vocal effects, you can you can do it. Or um, also, if you do a remix, maybe it's pretty cool if you want to change the melody of the vocals and and if you come up with different chords and you know you can use that stuff to to change and and pitch bend everything. So it's I think it's a really cool feature. Plus, it's really unique because no other door has it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a couple more Cubase features that I think are pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna show you some MIDI-related stuff. 
So what I'm doing now is I just created a contact and um, I'm going to load a snare sample. I'm going to show you how to create a snare fill and uh, use some of the randomized features, uh, MIDI features of, of Cubase. So I'm going to do this basic thing here. Okay. All right. So right now it's totally static. Um, what I'm doing now is you select all the notes, you go to MIDI logical presets, and now you get you got so many different presets here um, with cool stuff to do. And what I'm doing now is uh, random velocity, let's say uh, 60 to 100. Maybe that's a bit too much. Maybe uh, 85 to 100. Uh, and here the velocity now changed from from this to this and when you play it it's, so it's different uh, levels on, on every uh, snare hit I'm gonna make it a bit more extreme now to you know really show you what's going on um, let's do 60 to 100 so now it's more drastic So that's, that's a really cool feature to do uh, random velocities. I'm going to show you a couple of the cool Cubase plugins. I always, what I always use uh, from Cubase plugins is the stereo stuff in here. So for instance, um, you got to go to spatial plus panner and you got stuff like um, mono to stereo or the stereo enhancer. So if you, in that case, the stereo enhancer, you got the, the widening knob here. Um, so, you know, you can go from mono to really wide. Very simple. Or you have one knob here to turn it to mono instantly. I, what I do is when I have my kick drum, I put on this plugin, turn it on to mono and make sure that the kick drum is mono. Um, that's a cool one. Or a very cool one also is um, the mixer delay. That's what it's called. I think it's in the surround plugins, mixer delay. There you go. Um, and what, what you can do here is you can set a delay between the left and the right channel. Um, and when you do something small, like let's say 10 milliseconds, this is the, the widest effect that you can create. So uh, now it sounds like super wide. Yeah. You can play around with that and, and try different settings. So that's really cool. Yeah, the new mixing uh, console is, I think is really amazing in the, in the new version. I'm using Cubase 7. Um, and yeah, they, they made it really cool. But the cool thing about it is it's, it's full screen and it's, uh, it's, uh, adjustable. The size is flexible. So, um, I have to turn it into this now and, um, it kind of adjusts. You can, you can, you know, here you can, uh, change the, the width of every channel and, you got your inserts here, uh, your EQ, for instance, and now you can also increase the size of your faders. So it's, it's really um, very, very flexible, which is cool. And a um, couple of things I do in the mixer, uh, here you got your zones. What I always do is um, I set the stereo out, which is my master fader, to the second zone here. You just hit that button and that way you make sure that your master fader always shows up. No matter if you, you know, you can scroll through this area, through your, through your mixing channels, but the master fader always shows up. It's a pretty cool way, you know, because you can always check your uh, master gain. So yeah, the mixing engine of Cubase is extremely good. You get so much headroom in Cubase. The headroom is, is uh, you get so much headroom. Um, you know what I do when I, when I start a new project, um, I start with my kick drum and I'm gonna just pull up a kick now. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay. Uh, so what I do is I make sure that my kick drum is going to zero decibels here in my, in my, in my channel. And now everything else that I, that I create from that point on is, um, is, is relative to that reference here. So I, I, I leave it to, to zero dB and I mix everything according to the zero dB of the kick drum and then I might have to pull down my master fader, let's say, by two decibels, but that's it. Um, and that's only possible because you have so much headroom in, inside the engine of Cubase. Okay, so um, I just pulled up a sub bass, really, really simple one. It just, it's just playing off notes on, on A. And now I want to show you how I, how I mix and how I level my kick drum and uh, according relative to the, to the sub bass. Um, what I'm using is, uh, I, I'm, I'm using the Penguin Analyzer, which I got on my TV, but it's this one here. Um, so the kick drum is here. Um, to make it a bit easier now, I'm going to level it this way so we hit exactly the minus 10. Uh, okay. Alright, so this is um, the kick drum now and um, this is a kind of a nice advice maybe. You have to make sure that the, the difference between your kick drum and the sub bass is around about 5 decibels. So the kick drum should be about around 5 decibels louder than your sub bass. Then you have a nice balance and that creates a really good, good uh, bounce in, in, in your whole mix, especially on club speakers. That's the kind of levels, the balance that you want to get. So what I do now is I play my sub bass. To make it a bit more simple now, just to show it more obvious, I'm gonna play a different note. Let's say G2. This way we can see it better in the analyzer. Okay, so here is the sub bass now and the kick is here. So we got a difference of 10 decibels. That's too much. If I play the solo, yeah. And this is it. So I'm gonna pull this up until I have a difference of five decibels. Should be kind of here. Yeah, maybe a bit more. Yeah, and now the kick drum. That's it. So kick drum is here and the sub bass is here. This is a difference. This whole thing is 10 decibels, so half of it is 5 decibels. And um, if, you, if you just make sure you got exactly that range, then you will always have a great mix. So this is, I think it's a cool advice.